No way. <gasps> That's great. Interesting feedback from a Disney executive now going directly after the viewers, calling you, you guessed it, racist and sexist. That's why Disney isn't making money, according to a Disney executive. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you expected that. Now, we all knew that the whole gaslighting around going woke, we could see it coming from a million miles away, right? So they go woke, um, and then when nobody watches it, they say the reason you didn't watch it is because you don't like non-white people, which is ridiculous. The reason people stopped watching woke content is because the writers and those behind it, they focused exclusively on, um, they focus, fo focus exclusively, exclusively on checking boxes on diversity and this, that, and the other thing, as opposed to producing something good. But because they live their lives exclusively uh, looking at everything through the lens of race, then of course, when their products fail, that's exactly the only thing they can blame. Before I get into this great story from Christian Toto, just want to let everyone uh, know, I have for many years partnered with Meta PCs. They do custom build PCs. They're veteran owned. They also do some pre-builds. I partnered with them to put together some kind of like good, better, best options for people to look at various gaming computers. In fact, um, my brand new computer will be on this page next week, but you can also custom build your own um, laptops. They have financing, military discounts, promo code, the quartering one word, and you'll save money on your purchase too. That's always good. Now, Disney exec blames woes on racist and sexist fan newsletters reveal corporate arrogance behind the mouse house's fall. Stock woes, box office flops like Wish, Haunted Mansion, The Marvels, and now I'm pretty sure we can add Madame Web, which is technically Sony. Theme park struggles, beloved brands struggling for relevancy after years of cultural dominance like Indiana Jones, Pixar, Star Wars, and the MCU. There's a cottage industry of alternative outlets documenting Disney's decline. Neurotic, The Critical Drinker, uh, The Quartering, Film Threat. Hey, shout out. Thanks for the reference, Christian. Always check out Hollywood and Toto if you want, you know, actual Hollywood coverage from non-woke uh, journalists. What went wrong? The company's hard left turn for starters. Disney declared uh, war on popular Florida governor Ron DeSantis, pushed a not at all secret gay agenda, and embraced DEI principles behind closed doors. Yet the correct, the, I'm sorry, the company may not be listening to fans all but shouting for the mouse house to course correct and fast. Bulwark Culture editor Sonny Bunch shared a snippet from a recent newsletter suggesting Team Disney isn't about to change its ways. The teaser comes from Matt Baloney, haha, <laughs> of, of a um, puck with a P news fame who spoke to an unnamed Disney executive on the company's woes. They said executive blamed consumers, not the companies, for its problem. Audiences are too racist and sexist to embrace the Disney product. It's not us. It's you. Do you see that? I love this from Matt Baloney's newsletter. Disney cannot fail. It can only be failed by the mouth-breathing bigots who refuse to acknowledge the greatness of their films. It says, Light feedback this holiday week, but I wanted to share a DM I got from a Disney executive in response to Thursday's column on whether the politicization uh, uh, of Disney brand impacts the box office. Quote, Everyone says it's the movie, stupid, which is an easy thing for people to say. More appealing movies are a great way to jump the political issues. But more and more our audience, parentheses, or the segment of the audience that has been politicized, equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. They won't say that they find female empowerment distasteful in the Marvels or Star Wars, parentheses, the latest trilogy starring Daisy Ridley, but they will say that they don't like these movies because they are bad. So make better movies becomes code for 
make movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put men front and center in the narrative, which is what you're seeing now and what Bob Iger's pivot is about right now. So it sounds like Bob Iger is actually pivoting away from woke female empowerment. Now, the interesting thing to me about this is that these people always have selective memory when it comes to, you know, viewers in, 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 in like enjoying films with female leads, right? So for years, they said, oh, men would never embrace strong. There has never been a strong female character embraced by a male audience ever, except Ripley from the Aliens movies, except Sarah Connor from the Terminators movies. I'm not going to say that there are as many female action heroes as there are male, okay? But they would always seemingly forget in video games, Tomb Raider series, you know, <clears throat> Metroid, you know, it, there's there are new uh, many 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 female leads in many things that people love that always get conveniently forgotten by woke ideologues. I don't think, well, how about Scarlett Johansson in Black Widow, which outside of being released, um, you know, during the lockdowns and having a Disney plus release as well as there, there's kind of some, they didn't really know what to do with it. I have not seen anybody criticize Scarlett Johansson as Margot Robbie. I'm sorry, as Black Widow. I have not seen people criticize uh, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. I have not seen people criticize Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. Uh, I have not seen people. I mean, Agatha got a whole series and she's like a side quest character from an offshoot Disney Plus show, WandaVision. You have innumerable female action heroes, stars, you know, superheroes that people do like and have like people like these idiots forget like the Marvel fandom has embraced Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow character for almost 15 years. Suddenly, people don't like Captain Marvel, and it's not the movie. It's, it's that they don't like women. I don't think that you will find many people who will objectively say that the new Star Wars trilogies were good. There was only one good Star Wars movie that was ever created under the star, uh, under the Disney moniker, and it will go down as low key. I th I would say one of the top five Star Wars movies, and that's Rogue One. I know that might be blasphemous to say, but I really liked Rogue One. It was like you know dark and gritty, and it was good. Uh, people embraced, by the way, Gina Carano in the Mandalorian. People loved that character. Yet another female superhero, by the way, also starred in Deadpool. Also, you had in Deadpool, a megasonic, whatever, whatever, teenage girl, whatever. People liked her. There are, how about Xena Warrior Princess? One of the most popular shows on TV. Along in that era when you had Hercules and Xena, who was played by Lucy Lawless. I mean, I can go, uh, you know, I can name many, many, many strong female leads that people liked. It is, in fact, the movies, idiot. I'm sorry. It's the movies, stupid. The Marvels, which was the most recent, you know, female empowerment movie, as they would put it, was an objectively bad movie. Madam Web was an objectively bad movie. Madam Web is in practically the single digits on Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm sure a lot of those critics are female. Remember all the people complaining about Halle Berry playing Storm or Catwoman? No. Michelle Pfeiffer? No, I don't. By the way, shout out to um, Xena's sidekick. That's the one that I always had the crush on. Except critics aren't so keen on decent Disney's recent products either. Films like Wish, The Marvels, and Haunted Mansion are all fared poorly at Rotten Tomatoes. 
Others earn more positive reviews, but hardly the kind of rave reviews Disney product has normally earned. Survey says, it's complicated. All 29 companies have highly favorable, uh, uh, a product survey showed mixed results for Disney. On one hand, Disney Inc. is suffering for its political leanings. Of all 29 companies have high favorability ratings that's consistent with most opinion surveys of major companies and people actually carry pretty positive feelings about the major studios, but Disney scores the lowest with 21% unfavorable. No other entertainment company has an unfavorable rating above 11%, meaning Disney is nearly twice as disliked as any other Hollywood entity. Hulu, which is owned by Disney, scored especially well at only 8% unfavorable. Well, that's because I don't think Hulu produces much original stuff. Maybe was, did they had Castle Rock? I don't know if that was their original. I actually liked Castle Rock. I think they canceled that show. Yet the same survey suggests consumers won't take that into account if Disney product in question seems entertaining, meaning if it looks good, they're still going to buy Disney crap. If last year's Disney Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny looked exciting, few would have connected to the sequel, the sequel to Disney's ongoing woes. It didn't. The film proved to be a flop based on its gargantuan budget, $300 million versus $383 million worldwide gross. Disney still has considerable assets to build a comeback upon, including future sequels, Mona 2, Inside Out 2, Toy Story 5, effective belt-tightening measures, and allegiances to the video game revolution. Blaming audiences for the company's problems, especially suggesting naysayers are bigots, hardly seems like the best way to heal the company's financial wounds. Well, this is one of the big reasons I don't want to pay to see Deadpool. I'm, on the, I'm actually on the fence about Deadpool because on one hand, if you go and see it, you're telling Disney that we want these kind of movies, right? I will pay you for a good movie and I will not pay you for a bad movie. On the other hand, I'm still giving money to Disney. So I think that I'm torn. I'm fine to wait for Deadpool to be available in other avenues. There's nothing about seeing Deadpool the day it comes out uh, that is exciting to me. Superhero movies are no longer water cooler movies. There's no fear of missing out on superhero movies, even if it is Deadpool. Um, and so for me, I'm leaning towards still not seeing Deadpool just because I can watch it whenever in a variety of ways and still not give, any, give Disney money. But I can understand. I can understand why people will. One thing is for sure, Deadpool 2 or, or Deadpool Wolverine isn't going to save Disney. It's just going to be another Deadpool movie. That's all. In the, much in the same way Spider-Man movies still do good, it's not going to be good enough to make me want to see anything else Disney puts out. So it'll be interesting to see how that movie does in the box office.